I first got interested in educational neuroscience about 10 years ago when I was teaching college developmental reading and I saw an article in the paper about brain scans of people with the reading disorder called dyslexia. I said there and then I'm going to go back to school and do this and I did even though the field of educational neuroscience didn't exist then. I have been thrilled with this new field from the beginning. As a reading teacher, I had been discouraged with the lack of effective research and intervention for dyslexia, and suddenly a new window, new insights, a new way of looking at dyslexia. We recruited college students from various colleges, mostly from the community college, and we gave them a battery of language tests and IQ tests, reading tests, and then we gave them MRI structural brain scans. And then, of course, as a researcher, we were blinded as to the sex of the person or their, uh, whether or not they had dyslexia. And then we measured different regions in the brain to see if there was a difference in the size or shape or asymmetry of some of these regions in the brain that might have predisposed them to dyslexia. Now when you see a difference in the brain, it's across groups, but if you see it in an individual, it doesn't mean that they have dyslexia, but it means it might be one more risk factor than if they don't get adequate instruction or other issues come up, it might push them into that. I'm very excited about my future research. It's examining the impact of stress and trauma on learning. I've been studying post-traumatic stress disorder for years and I'm continuing to develop information for teachers about teaching and learning in the presence or aftermath of stress or trauma. In looking at the research, a few years ago, right after Hurricane Katrina, there was almost no research on schools and trauma. And now there are several interesting studies that have been done. And our students are more impacted by stress, not just math anxiety or reading anxiety, but all kinds of stress in their lives that have an impact on their ability to learn. Now I'm talking about high stress. A little stress is okay. You know, t being timed or cramming for a test. But high stress can have a big impact, especially on the frontal lobes. So I'd like to, uh, help teachers and students be more aware of this so that they can deal more effectively with that issue. I had to make a difficult decision to leave the college reading classroom and decide to educate educators about this because I felt that I could make a bigger difference by making this information known to teachers through giving talks and writing books and therefore ultimately make a difference to even more students because I feel it's hugely important for teachers and for students to understand about how their brain learns.